If you are traveling alone for the first time in Europe, make sure you watch this video because in it, I'm gonna be sharing all sorts of tips and must knows for first timers. Hi, I'm Christina from happytowander.com. And over the past 10 years of living in and traveling around Europe, I have done my fair share of European solo travel, ranging from social hostel trips to swankier solo business trips. Of course, along the way, I've made a ton of mistakes and learned a lot the hard way. So in this video, I'm sharing everything to make sure that you are prepared for your very first solo trip. So let's get started with some solo travel basics. Now, personally, I think the most important thing before your first solo trip is to really just build up your confidence as much as possible before you go. Everybody has different comfort levels and anxieties when it comes to solo travel. So I find it really helps to write those down and then work on addressing those anxieties prior to your departure. With me, for instance, something I get really nervous about is kind of the thought that I might be stuck somewhere and I won't be able to ask for help or know where to get help. So one of the ways that I build up my confidence around that is I always try to learn a bit of the local language before I go. On that note, this week's video is brought to you by Babbel. Babbel is one of the world's top language learning apps and it's absolutely perfect for travelers because it focuses on real world phrases and vocabulary that you can easily use on your trip ranging from asking about train connections to asking people out for a drink. Prendiamo un aperitivo. Prendiamo un aperitivo. The lessons are super quick, so you can squeeze them in any time. And there's also a lot of different exercises that kind of keep things fresh. Plus they have travel themed lessons as well. So you can learn cultural quirks like local dishes and different dialects, as well as describing the specific type of travel that you're doing. Ti sei ricordato della crema solare? Ti sei ricordato della crema solare? <laughs> if you want to give Babbel a try, you can check out the link in my description for 60% off your subscription, whether you go for a month, three months, a year, or even their lifetime subscription, which is an amazing deal because it includes all their languages. All right, be sure to let me know in the comments which language you're most keen to learn, and thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring this week's video. Of course, improving solo travel confidence can go way beyond just language skills. So if, for instance, you're really nervous about navigating around a new place, something you can do is improve your navigation skills by doing small adventures closer to where you live. In a similar way, if you're nervous about being out on your own or eating alone, you can easily practice those in your hometown as well. So really building up your confidence prior to your departure is key. Now, another important consideration is what kind of solo travel trip you want to do, because there's honestly so many different options. For instance, if you don't want to worry about the travel planning and logistics side of things, you can easily join a group tour or organized tour. Or you can do a classic backpacking trip and meet friends along the way. Or you can enjoy a luxurious solo holiday as well. Honestly, the sky's the limit when it comes to solo trips, so be sure to write down kind of what you're envisioning for your solo trip so that you can plan accordingly. Great, so with all that in mind, let's move on to solo travel planning tips. Now, in terms of accommodation as a solo traveler, I think most people, when they think of solo travel, they imagine backpacking in hostels. And while that is definitely an option, if that's not your vibe, don't worry, you don't have to stay in hostels. There's actually so many other options out there that are still budget friendly. So for instance, a lot of hotels in Europe will actually have single rooms that are cheaper than double rooms. So keep in mind that hostels aren't the only budget friendly way to solo travel around Europe. I will say though, as a solo traveler, it's quite important to be booking accommodation in a busier area because you don't wanna be stuck in a situation where you're walking home on your own at night and you don't necessarily feel safe. So I would definitely book somewhere that's a bit busier so that you know there's gonna be other people around. On a similar note, I would also advise doing research in advance to see what the more dangerous areas of the place you're visiting are so that you know which areas to avoid. If you are interested in hostels though, one website I can highly recommend is Hostel World. They used to be my go-to during my backpacking days and they have a lot of great features that are perfect for people who are traveling on their own, including a group chat function that allows you to actually speak to other people who are staying there while you're staying there as well. Now, in terms of safety when booking in hostels, do know that if you're not interested in staying in a mixed dorm, most hostels will have a female only dorm or in some cities, there's even female only hostels. So if that's a concern, keep that in mind. 
Another potential option is vacation rentals like Airbnb. But to be honest, for a lot of different reasons these days, I don't really think Airbnbs are worth it unless you're staying really long term. And that's because rarely are the fees justified. And as a solo traveler, when you're staying with Airbnb, there tends to be a lot of different hoops that you still have to jump through. So you have to meet up with your host. And sometimes if you're not renting out the entire apartment, you're going to have to share that space with a host or other guests. And just overall, I think as a solo traveler, it's a lot safer and just more consistent if you book with a hotel or hostel. Now, in terms of must buys before your trip, one really important thing to make sure you have is internet access. So not only are you going to need access to data when you're abroad to do things like navigate or use translation apps, it's also really crucial for safety as well to ensure that you're able to communicate with loved ones from home or communicate with other people when you need to. So I would highly recommend making sure your phone either has a really solid international data plan or you can look into getting a local SIM or an eSIM that works when you're abroad. Luckily, there's no roaming charges within the EU. So if you buy a SIM card in one country, you'll be able to use your data allowance across the EU and a few other countries as well. So that's really handy. It's kind of like a one and done. And if you're visiting multiple countries, then most of the time you don't need to worry about it. Lastly, for this section, I would highly recommend getting a travel friendly credit card just because if you're using local cards and they fail to work when you're abroad, then you're on your own and you don't have any backup options. So having a travel friendly credit card can really be helpful for ease of mind. For me personally, I love my Wise card. I use it all the time and it's completely free to get. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Now let's move on to some solo travel transport tips and tips for getting around. First off, always plan your commute so that you arrive during the day. The last thing that you want to deal with when you're alone in a new place is trying to navigate in the dark. So I know sometimes it can be a bit more expensive to organize landings that happen during the day, but definitely make sure you're not going to be dealing with a nighttime arrival because that can be really, really stressful. Now this next tip is kind of bougie, but I do think it's worth it in some cases, and that is to splurge on first class. Now the reason I say this is because in some countries like France and Germany, for instance, when you book a first class train ticket, oftentimes you'll get access to individual seats. So you can book an individual seat where you don't have to sit next to anybody and you can spread out and really enjoy yourself. And if you book far enough in advance, a lot of the time first class isn't that much more expensive than second class. So I really do think it's a worthwhile splurge. I also find that first class cars tend to feel safer as well. Otherwise, when choosing where to sit, I can highly recommend sitting near families or couples if you're worried about safety. Honestly, when I'm sitting near a mom, regardless of a language barrier or not, I usually feel like I can trust them to look after my bag. So keep that tip in mind. Now, if you plan on walking a lot, which I definitely do recommend, remember that when you're traveling on your own, you are 100% in charge of navigating and finding your way. So I would highly recommend building up your confidence in navigation if that's not something that you're naturally good at. Of course, there are a few tricks that you can use. For instance, if you're anxious about navigating on your own for the first time, one trick you can use is actually hopping on Google Street View and checking out the route so that you can kind of see what it's going to look like. In addition to that, I would really recommend downloading an offline map on Google Maps just in case you run out of data or if your phone gets stolen. I would also advise grabbing a business card from the hotel. That way you'll have the hotel's address and name on you no matter what and downloading the local language on the Google Translate app. That way you have it for offline use and you can still use it to translate signs and things like that. All right, now let's move on to packing tips for solo travel. The most important one is to pack light. Because remember, when you're traveling alone, you're going to be completely in charge of your own bags. So ideally, you're going to want to make sure that you're able to carry every single bag you bring on your own in one go. In the past, I've seen solo travelers with multiple suitcases, and then often they're in a situation where they have to leave the suitcase at the bottom of the stairs and do multiple trips. You really don't want to have to do that. So make sure no matter how much you pack, it's something that you can carry on your own in one trip. I would also advise you bring a book or a journal with you or some kind of solitary activity that you genuinely enjoy. And that's just because when you're traveling alone, there's going to be a lot of downtime. So make sure you have something to do and occupy yourself with in those periods when you're just on your own. I do love physical books, but for longer trips, it might make more sense to bring an e-reader. And I personally am a huge fan of my Kobo e-reader because I can link it up to my library card and then rent eBooks for free, which is a perfect hack for longer trips. 
Now, in addition to solitary activities, you might also want to consider bringing something quite social, like a deck of cards or a fun game that you can keep with you at all times, just in case you want to be building friendships while you're traveling alone. Safety-wise, it's always good to also bring a portable charger. So as I mentioned before, having data can be super important when you're traveling alone. So making sure you have ready access to a charge when you need it is really important. You should also consider some kind of plug or outlet extender, especially if you're planning on staying in dorms because oftentimes there can be limited plugs and if you need space to charge your things, then it's good to have that extender. That way you can charge multiple things at once. Lastly, make sure you have really good noise cancelling headphones. These are so handy for every part of your trip, from the plane ride to different transportation modes throughout your trip to noisy hostels or even if you're staying in a place where it's noisy outside. Trust me, good headphones make all the difference. Now let's move on to how to make friends as a solo traveler. I should say I don't think that you necessarily need to socialize on a solo trip if you don't want to. After all, you're traveling on your own. If you prefer that, that's perfectly valid. But I do think a lot of people want to make friends and meet new people when they're traveling on their own. If that's you, here are some tips to keep in mind. Now, before we talk about where to meet friends, one really important thing to keep in mind is that first impressions really do matter. So if you're about to enter a new situation where you're gonna meet new people and you wanna make friends, be very aware of the vibe that you put out. Because if you enter a hostel room and you're really moody and you don't look like you wanna talk to anybody, odds are that first impression is gonna stick and people aren't gonna want to talk to you. If on the other hand, you walk in, you're super friendly and approachable, that kind of sets the tone. So it's really hard to change that first impression so whether it's you know entering a hostel or entering a walking tour or wherever, just be aware of the first impression because that really makes a difference. Now, if you're kind of shy, a really easy way to kind of draw friends to you is maybe having something or wearing something that hints at a hobby that you have. So maybe like a pin on your backpack or a t-shirt that alludes to one of your hobbies. That way you kind of have a magnet for like-minded friends and it also provides an icebreaker as well. Also keep in mind where you can find potential friends as a solo traveler. So apart from hostels, I really like going on walking tours or guided tours, just because most of the time people there are really eager to chat, especially if it's a niche tour that's organized around a particular interest, like a filming locations tour or something like that, because then you're already gonna have common ground with the other people there. You can also try meeting people online through Facebook groups or through Bumble BFF. Now, another easy trick for potentially making friends is when you're out in public, keep an eye out for other solo travelers or maybe groups of friends and then offering to take a photo for them. At the very least, you can help them get a photo. They might offer to get you a photo in return and that's a great icebreaker because then you can continue the conversation. If you feel awkward and you're not really sure what kind of things to ask people, I find that the easiest thing to do is to just ask for recommendations. So you can say, hey, I'm kind of new to the city. Have you been to any cafes or any bakeries that you'd really recommend? And then you can kind of gauge the vibe and see if they're receptive to continuing the conversation. If not, no pressure. The worst thing is you get some great recommendations for bakeries. All right, now let's move on to the very important section of solo travel safety tips. First, always look up local scams before you arrive. Regardless of where you're going, odds are there are common scams and traps that a lot of tourists fall into. So, so long as you keep those in mind, that can really help prevent you from falling for them. You should also do some research and have an idea of the rougher areas in your destination to avoid as well. Now, when you're walking around, walking around confidently and with purpose is key. The more lost and unsure you look, the more likely you are to attract unwanted attention. So just be sure, no matter what, even if you're super lost, walk around like you're not and then wait until you're in a safe place to check your map. You should also aim to always keep someone in the loop from home about where you're going and what your plans are for the day. And if that sounds like too much work, then you can also look into tracking apps that you can use to share your location with trusted individuals. So with iPhones, for instance, there's the built-in Find My app, or you can look into third-party apps like Life360, which automatically shares your location with people that you set. Another important safety tip is to always meet new people in a public location. Whether that's a friend that you've met on the internet or maybe if you're going on a date, make sure you're always meeting in public first and never meet them at their home or anything like that. And be sure to avoid getting too drunk when you're out because obviously that's gonna hinder your judgment. And this is especially true if you've just arrived in the destination because if you're not sure where you're going and you don't have your bearings yet, there's nothing worse than getting overly drunk and not being able to find your way home. 
Next, be sure to always have backups of everything. So that includes backup copies of your most important documents like your passport and also backup cards like bank cards or credit cards or backup cash that you store in a different bag just in case you get pickpocketed. It's also pretty important to be backing up things like photos on your phone as well, just in case your phone gets stolen, whether that's through iCloud, on your iPhone, or through Google Photos. Remember, those memories are priceless, and so I would ensure that I'm backing up my photos every day just in case my phone gets lost. And lastly, of course, I would really recommend getting travel insurance on the off chance that something does go wrong. And I know that travel insurance can sometimes be expensive, but for me, the ease of mind is definitely worth it. For me personally, I'm very lucky that my credit card actually includes travel insurance, so you can look into credit cards if you're in the market for that that might include perks like that. Otherwise, in the past, I've used World Nomads for insurance and have always been happy with them. And remember, at the end of the day, it's always better to be safe than sorry. So if you're staying in a dorm, for instance, and you think all your dorm mates are amazing, so you don't need to worry about safety, honestly, just lock up your things anyway, or in situations where you feel like maybe you might be in danger, but probably not, always err on the side of caution and trust your gut. All right, lastly, here are some final miscellaneous tips for solo travel. First off, remember that there are great perks when it comes to solo travel, whether that's being able to buy the final cheap ticket because it's a single ticket at a show or being able to use the single rider's line at a theme park. There are lots of great perks to solo travel. That's why so many people love it. So keep that in mind and take advantage. On the other hand, another important tip is to just accept that you're gonna have bad days. As amazing as solo travel is, it's a real roller coaster of emotions. So there's inevitably gonna be a day when you're just not feeling it or you wish that you were home or you wish that you were sharing the experience with someone else. This is completely normal, even in spite of the fact that I love solo travel, I've had those days as well. So if that happens, don't force yourself to go out and enjoy and spend time out in public if you don't want to. Feel free to wallow. You have my blessing to wallow because sometimes you just need days like that. And if you feel like you need a day to recharge, one really great website to look into is called Day Use. And basically they sell hotel rooms at a discount because you're just renting it for a few hours during the day. So if you're staying in a hostel and you wanna treat yourself, maybe get like a pamper session in, you can look into getting a hotel through them. In terms of dining, if you're kind of shy about getting a table for one, which you shouldn't because it's very common and nobody actually is paying that much attention to you, but if you are anxious about that, one of my favorite hacks is to just get takeout and then make a picnic of it and enjoy it somewhere where the people watching is really good. Another option is to just sit up at the bar because that way it's easier to strike up conversations with other patrons, or at the very least you can chat to the bartender. Another fun tip I'll add is to just make sure your phone or your computer is loaded up with movies from your destination. Not only will you have a lot of downtime in the evenings to watch a lot of movies or TV shows, it's just really fun to watch things that are set in the place you're going because then during the day when you're sightseeing, you can just be like, wow, I recognize this from the show. And it's kind of like a game that you can play with yourself. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed all those tips about solo travel in Europe. If you want more practical travel videos just like this one, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.